What's going on you guys? In today's video, I'm here in Texas at Corpus Christi. We're actually on Padre Island and I'm here to buy my first truck from Copart and I uh, figured might as well stay here at a beach at this uh, hotel right here. What is it Island Resort or something? But uh, hey guys, here it is. Quick look at the beach. Pretty dang cool. Let's go pick up my new 2001 Cummins diesel from Copart. On our way to Copart, this is my dad's Cummins right here, 3500. We'll see if the uh, second gen i'm picking up will fit on our little flatbed it should just barely fit so you know this thing used to be longer but a long time ago my dad cut it off my dad actually made this trailer like back in the 80s so hopefully he can support it here we go island resort pretty awesome beach over there let's go to copart there he is picking it up oh that's me Oh, there it is. He's loading it up. Pretty awesome. There's my new Cummins. Let's see if this thing even fits on the trailer. Man, there it is. There it is, man. Look at that Cummins. Green. I love that. Let's see if this thing fits. Man. Hey guys, this thing just barely fits on the trailer. Perfect though. Oh my gosh, the Cummins. Well, you guys, here we are. We just stopped at our first red stop. It's a little after the co-part because it took a long time. We had to take these fenders off because the trailer went down so low, it, it literally, the tires couldn't turn. So look at that, thing's barely on there. The other light is uh, not grounded because we have it zip tied, so it doesn't even work. This thing barely fits on here. This actually just came off. We had to re-get that one done. I mean, oh my gosh. It's turning into a big ordeal and I'm just exhausted, but there's a lot more damage. Look at that. See that? See that's broken off right there? That's the steering sheared off. And look at the control arms. Look at those control arms. Just crunched. I mean, control arms aren't too expensive. You know, probably to replace the whole steering is like 300 bucks. Control arms will probably be, you know, $100. So just, just a lot more labor, but I mean, there it is. Try to get you a better view, sorry. But uh, yeah, all the way back to Arizona. Just picked this up in, you know, Texas, pretty much right on the Gulf. And uh, gotta go all the way back to Arizona. Still got about another thousand miles ahead of us. Oh yeah, the keys are locked inside too. And look at this, I'm gonna have to get a new door because uh, it was stolen beforehand. And I actually had a key made for this truck, but they changed the locks. The key's in the ignition, but the doors are locked. So I'm gonna have to break into this truck at some point. Inside pick, I mean, look at that. Look at that manual transmission right there. What speed is that? It is a nice five speed. <laughs> awesome. So here's a little update. We're, we're outside of San Antonio. Beautiful right here. But uh, look at this. Had to, uh, we just had to hook on, what was it, right there and straighten out these tires because look at this. It kind of like jiggled over and uh, look how nice and sticky that is. That is, that is, that, <laughs> that is some hot tire from rubbing up against right there. So got it straightened out. Things barely on the trailer. And uh, yeah, over here, it's a little more on the trailer because of, you know, how bent up it is. So, but yeah, kind of this tire was shoved up in there and it kind of popped out. And I think it kind of made the fender pulled it out a little bit, but at least it's a little safer for towing a little better a little bit of clearances there but yeah back on the road we go look at that cummins is doing great by the way that thing got 15.5 miles per gallon towing this trailer with nothing on it all the way from arizona to texas so we'll see what kind of mpg we get back going back towing this back to arizona so we'll see how much of a how much mpg we lose okay guys so it's nighttime and uh Look, Cummins is still back there. There you go. And uh, we got some serious uh, storm coming through, so I'm pretty excited. I love it when it uh, storms, because, you know, from Arizona, none of this happens. There ain't no such thing as a storm. So, look at all this lightning. Just awesome. At least the truck is getting washed. Oh, yes. Man, this is crazy lightning out here. So next day, and we're finally leaving Texas right now, actually. I think we're just crossing the border. And uh, yeah, Cummins has been doing good. Um, towing the other Cummins right there. Everything's good. Had to take the fenders off, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we'll 
both sides. That side's pretty close, but oop, there we go. New Mexico, so close to getting back to Arizona. So close. But look at this guy. Now we've been averaging, according to the truck, 11.3. Here's the MPG for the 2015 to tow the green manual Cummins all the way from Corpus Christi to Queen Creek, Arizona. So from Texas to Arizona, there's our miles. And the MPG, which the truck's at 11, which is actually dang near spot on. I just hand calculated it here at the uh, gas station here. And uh, it was 11.3. So 11.3 miles per gallon in the Cummins. And this one does have a uh, tuner on it. Um, has a filter back exhaust and a 30 horsepower towing tune. And that's it, otherwise this truck is pretty much stock. And uh, other than like a Banks intake manifold and like a colder intake. But uh, yeah, 11.3 to tow a Cummins. I mean, that's probably at least eight, 9,000 pounds with the trailer. That's a pretty heavy trailer. Plus the, you know, a four wheel drive Cummins diesel truck. So yeah, 11, 15 and a half to get there towing the flatbed and 11.3 towing the truck back. That's actually not too much of a loss really now that we got, got the truck home let's go check it out so here it is we got it home it's the, the next day here and uh i just bought this little break-in kit and uh let's try to get into it then i'll go over all the damage but i want to really go inside first so let's uh get this thing open so i got this little kit off amazon it's got some little bag things to get the door pried open and a wedge and a long pole let's see if we can just uh pop the door open here as you can see i got these two bags got the rod going in i just need to my dad's grabbing some windex right now so I can actually see in there. And uh, I think I'm gonna try pulling the handle. If not, there's a little lock switch over there or try to pull this. I can't really get a good angle at pulling the uh, little door lock up. You guys can see it over there. Uh, if the window's clean. Just missed me go woohoo, cause I was happy cause I just got the door open, got it through the uh, handle there. And uh, we're in, we are, oh, oh, oh. ah, first time opening it up. Wide angle, um, here we go. A little creaky, a little dirty. They had a dog. That is a lot of hair. Look at that. Still has all the wood panel trim. Um, get this thing out the way. Step on this tire here. Lots of dog hair, man. But dang, is it clean, man? This ain't bad. Um, now I'll uh, get the other side unlocked real quick, and uh, doesn't look too bad. I like this. Everything's pretty much cleaned out. I got 20 cents and some salt and pepper. Here's the little thing. Let's see, does it have an anti-spin? There's a roll of speaker wire coming out of the carpet right here. Hmm. Looks like it does not have an anti-spin. That kind of sucks. So this truck is probably a one tire fryer because it doesn't say anti-spin on here, but it's a 355 axle ratio. Um, everything's real creaky. Dash is actually not bad. One crack there. Couple, couple cracks here and there. I won't get a dash mat for it, but it's not bad. It's not caved in. Um, man oh looks like it just got an oil change or needs an oil change um it's got the little thing there got some wires coming down it's missing the tweeter well you guys my phone keeps dying because it's too dang hot out here but uh seat doesn't look too bad on this side Could probably just have that repaired but uh this door doesn't seem to want to open typical dodge i think the red truck did that and we fixed it so we'll get that done but it looks like the stereo system because this truck was actually stolen before it was crashed and the whole stereo system is ripped out of it looks like it had an aftermarket one with the bluetooth you can see that's some just cheesy one they threw in there i think after it was stolen but all the speakers are gone out of it i don't know about the door speakers i'll find out about that later in this video i would like to just see if it has oil and possibly try to start it i don't know the batteries are dead here it is um could definitely use some help on the interior door panels are kind of they look good but they're kind of the driver one's good but they're kind of falling apart the passenger one is right here but uh, it's kind of cool i've never had like a laramie truck with a black leather i like that the steering wheel is in like really good condition um looks really awesome honestly i like it got the full leather back seat but everything's been kind of like stripped out of it doesn't really have anything I have to get floor mats gonna have to get a bunch of stuff yeah, I'm gonna try to take it out of gear. It looks like it's just been thrown in a second. Put the, hold the brake, clutch in. Let's see how it feels. Doesn't seem to be too bad. Feels a little clunky though. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> it's all a guessing game, we'll see. Parking brake is kind of weird. Look how it's all angled over. I can't really push it in. I don't know if it's working right or what. Gonna need some help, but We'll see. We'll get this thing all fixed up and looking good. Restore a nice second gen. I mean, like the headliner's good. I can order up a new one of these. Visors are all nice and pretty good. Um, 
yeah, just need some help. Let's um, check underneath the hood. I wanna see if it has any oil in it because uh, the oil pan is kind of smashed in a little bit. We'll, we'll check out some of the damage here right now. Yeah, another thing that sucks is it's got a locking gas cap and I don't see no keys in there. This key that was made for it doesn't work from the locksmith people, whatever, from the Copart plate. Hopefully it's got some diesel in it already, at least a little bit, but make sure the doors are unlocked. Let's go and uh, check underneath the hood. Look at this, first you can see, there's how far it kind of smashed in there on the front. You guys can see some of the damage, the grill, hood there. Um, but going underneath here, Cummins seems to be fine. I mean, I'm kind of down low here, kind of just reaching up over. I need to get a step stool look in there. Batteries probably need to be jumped. I don't know, look at that. Definitely probably need to be replaced. For, especially for being 2021s though. Look at those almost 2022 batteries. Those are like brand new batteries. Maybe we can get those working, charged up. But uh yeah. Um here's most of the damage. I'm gonna order up an AC condenser because I'm guessing that it's probably broken. <laughs> um, I'm just hoping the intercooler behind it isn't too damaged. Hopefully it holds air. Um, if not, that would kind of suck. That's like another 500 bucks. AC condenser is only $50, so that's pretty simple. Looks like it has an aftermarket air filter. Um, need to check the oil. Need a, I got a rag over there. I guess I can do that right now. But here, let's show you guys underneath kind of some of the damage here. Pretty much the steering rack is snapped off right there. Um, you can see where it hit the front of the axle, the, uh, what is this, like the drag link or the tie rod link going across. Uh, a steering stabilizer is kind of smashed up right there. I think that's from Copart, the forks mostly doing that. And the big problem is those dang control arms, as you can see, they're just completely folded in. And if you guys look underneath here, you can see it did hit the oil pan, the axle back here. Try to give you guys a look. Try to get underneath there. Yeah, you guys can see the oil pan did get kind of smashed in. So, yeah, hopefully it's not leaking. And then just need the bumper, uh, AC condenser, possibly intercooler, and then probably gonna have to do a new hood and a new grill. So, shouldn't be too expensive really to fix it up. I mean, I've been looking around, a guy has a hood and a grill on Facebook Marketplace for like a hundred bucks. Honestly, the most expensive thing is gonna be like finding a bumper. I might just take the one off the O2 and try to find a sport one for the O2, I'm not sure. Probably to fix it all up, probably max two grand-ish, something like that, to get it, you know, in good condition. And then obviously paint, probably be another like thousand or so, because it does have some problems there. If you go to it was the passenger side, you guys can see, has a little bit of rust starting there, so I would like to get that, you know, sanded down and repainted. I mean, I'm gonna have to have the hood repainted anyway, so might as well have them touch up the rest of the truck, you know. A little lucky there, look at that, we got oil. It's, uh, what is that, right up there, right past the safe there. So, got oil in it, so that's pretty good. So the oil pan is not, uh, at least it's not, you know, leaking out. And uh, I'm gonna try to get these batteries charged up and see if we can, uh, possibly start the thing i don't know they're pretty corroded so but they're pretty new that they're, they're not even a year old yet so let's give it a try well you guys we got a charger on it we're gonna let it charge for a little bit but look at this you guys can see at least i got lucky it's got a half a tank you know that's a lot of money right there that's probably at least you know 80 bucks airbag light on hmm i don't know if that'll that, i think they'll shut off normally 162 on it what's this trip you got zero trip hmm well, it's got this tick. If you can hear it, it kind of goes on and off randomly. So I don't know what it could be. Maybe my doors. Here, shut that door. Let's see. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what that tick is. But I'm going to let this thing kind of charge up. Man, good old manual. I wonder if it's... I really wonder what's up with the parking brake. Why is that so stiff? And why is it moved over? See, there you go, it shut off. Okay, well, um, I am going to get out of here before I die from the heat. There you go, see, it opened up again. It started again when I opened the door. Hopefully this doesn't have like some type of electrical problem. Huh. If I turn that on, it goes away. That's weird, let me know what you guys uh, think that is. Um, <laughs> I don't know, we're just gonna let it charge. I'm gonna take the key here and uh, we're gonna see, let it charge up for a little while and then come back and try to start it. it has oil and uh, so if anything, it should start, but we'll see. It's actually weird, it's coming from down there. I don't know what it could be. But well, look at this, if I touch the door lock. 
stopped or comes back. I don't know. That's lock. That should be unlock. Okay, I don't know. Oop, there we go. That was just popped out. Huh. Um, yeah. Gonna need some help on some of this stuff. I don't know what that ticking noise is. I don't know. Right here it is charging up. Seems to be charging pretty good. That was at zero not too long ago, so come back in an hour. Oh, and look at this. I did notice. Look at the uh intercooler is actually pushed back i don't know if it's uh hopefully it didn't hit the radiator here too bad we just popped it open and it was pressurized um i don't know maybe because it's so hot out here but i don't know but uh yeah this thing should sound pretty good though being a manual and uh it's got a nice exhaust on it if you guys look underneath here it's got a straight pipe five inch with a bigger muffler than mine so i don't know if it'll be a little quieter i, I honestly can't wait to hear how this thing sounds so we'll see Looks pretty good. Um, oh yeah, we took the bumper off just so we'd have more turning radius with the truck hooked up. So I'm just gonna leave that off until I probably get this tailgate repainted because it's the only thing that's all faded like this. I, I think this is not the tailgate that came with the truck because the paint doesn't really match up. So we're gonna try starting this thing up. Get that going. Let's see. Nothing. Huh. Ten neutral. That's in. <laughs> it's got a code. I wonder what that is. Hmm. I don't know what that could be. I feel like it might have an aftermarket alarm system of some sort. Cause I don't know what the hell, what, or I don't know what else it could be. Yeah, I found the problem to the not starting. Look at that. This this thing making that stupid clicking noise. It's got a stupid aftermarket alarm. And since the guy didn't give the keys or whatever, I don't know if the keys are lost, I don't have a fob for it. So looks like that's where we're at. I'm pretty sure this guy had put a big old bump and sound system in it. Cause look back here, you got speaker wire or whatever, all back in there. Probably had big old subwoofers. That's why the storage tray is gone back there. He probably had big subwoofers playing his music loud, bumping around. Other people hear it, they see it. They're like, oh, let's go steal all that. And then boom, they go steal his truck, steal all of his sound system out. Everything's all gone. And uh, he gets a truck back. He puts a stupid alarm in, which I mean, I guess what do you do at that point? Might as well put one in, but dang damn it. Now I'm here. He crashes it, goes to auction, doesn't give the keys to him. And now I'm here with this. So need to figure out what to do with this aftermarket alarm. Uh, I don't know uh, what to do here. Cause I actually just messed around with it for a second. And I think I might have gotten to work. I was like holding the door lock switch and it, it made it all change. So let's see if this will work real quick. Here we go. Here, I'm going to try this. We got a crank start. Oh, I was messing with this. I was just sitting there. I held the button and then the ticking went away. I think that must be like the kill switch is this uh, door lock or something. Because I noticed when I touch the door locks, it would like make clicking noises. <laughs> I think I just need a little bit more charge. This has only got about, what is that, like 12 volts in? 12 ish volts. Hey guys, so it's been a week since we got it and pretty much I went, you know, had to go to work and everything. But as you guys can see, we've been charging this thing up. Still not showing a full charge, but uh, we're gonna switch this battery uh, charger over to this side and put it on the uh, little jump starter one right there. And uh, we're gonna try to get this thing started up. The first start up in the 01, the Copart truck. Let's see if this thing starts. Here we go. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, we got a start, but no run. Not, maybe I have to give it some gas. Let's see. Kind of reset it here. Weird, no fuel. I mean, it's showing, at least on here, half a tank, but hopefully. Well, that's weird. That is another weird problem.
That's weird. I can rev it, but it just dies. That is oh, great. Now it's showing it's in four wheel drive. No. Huh. Let me try it one more time. Just shuts off. Huh. Well, could be the alarm. I don't know. We'll have to figure this out. Guys, I think it might have just been out of diesel. You know, I know the problem ain't got no gas in it or diesel, but uh, I just popped that thing off. Literally just a screwdriver, a flathead. You can pop off any of those locking gas caps. So, but got a brand new gas cap here. Um, I don't even know where this attaches. Oh, it's right there. Duh. Huh. Well, let's see. Does this one even fit? Oh, yes. Perfect. Nice. Let's put five gallons of diesel in. Now the thing is we're going to have to cycle it. Okay, here we go. We'll give it a try again. Dang it, man, I think we're gonna have to bleed the freaking lines now because I wasted my few starts I had. Well guys, I don't think we'll be getting the truck started today. It's just not looking likely. Like pretty much we go to try to start first time once we got started up. It would run, then shut off. Then we tried again. It would run, shut off. Run, shut off. Like it would say running for maximum like a second and a half. Then I'm like, dang, it probably needs gas. You know, my dad's like, oh, well, it's showing half tank. And we're like, hmm, hmm. We're him hawing around trying to figure out what it is. Pretty much I go to try to start it again and I give it some gas, some throttle, and it ran for like maybe two seconds. Then after that, it just cranks, just cranks. So they're like, well, shoot, maybe it needs gas. We had some gas in it, but now we've lost prime in the VP44 pump system. So you have to bleed the lines. We crank, 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 crank forever. Batteries die. Come back the next day, try it again. This time we put some starting fluid. We actually have the boot off right there. <laughs> Use a little thing. Look at this. I got a matching key tag. Nice uh, green key tag. Go with the green truck. Pretty cool. And uh, it's funny. I just had this laying around too, which was awesome. And uh, so we did starting fluid. I actually got to run on starting fluid. It sounded very weird. I don't know if it was really healthy for a diesel to be running on starting fluid, but he was just spraying a little in, got it running. Never could get the fuel system uh, primed up. So I think we have something wrong where, you know, from the, uh, you know, we got the injectors up here. You got the fuel lines, you got the VP pump. Then you got the, uh, I think this one still has the pump on the block, the lift pump on the block. I think we're not getting fuel from the tank to that lift pump. So we're possibly before the VP44. Somewhere in there, we're not getting fuel. So that's what we're kind of looking at. So we just need to get the control arms and the steering fixed up and get it off the trailer. Well, get it running, then get it off the trailer. So that'll be for next video, you guys. This video is, you know, pretty much we just got the truck and uh, we tried getting it started, but we got it here all the way from Texas. Pretty crazy drive, especially being like on the edge of the trailer. We actually moved it back a little bit, but it was literally right on the edge. The whole experience here with the uh, truck um, and the whole Copart experience has been kind of like, eh, you know, I think at the very end of getting this truck fully built, I'll do like a full cost analysis, how much I paid for it, and you know, ex exactly how much I end up making on it from selling it, because I do probably plan on selling this at some point, you know, in the new near future. So I think I'll save that for like the end, you know, the full cost analysis type thing for like a final video on the truck. But this is the most I've ever paid for any of my diesel trucks. More than I paid for the 05 Cummins, more than I paid for the red truck, more than I paid for the white truck. 
and it's in a lot worse condition. I mean, a lot lower miles, you know, a lot lower miles, but salvage title, a lot worse condition. But I still think there's an opportunity to make money as long as it's not something huge. The real thing I'm really mad about, about the whole Copart experience is the fact that they said this is a run and drive. I mean, I don't know what their standards are for run and drive, but they must be like way down here because my standards are like at least kind of up here, but I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe they started it, it still had prime in the fuel system and then it leaked all out or something, you know. Maybe it leaked up, leaked out after they got it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the dang tire is so dang close right here. How, how do you drive that, you guys? Like, like, I don't know. I feel like this should have been listed as a stationary, you know, maybe an engine start program because that's kind of like the levels of them. It kind of goes run and drive then like it's like engine start program or enhanced vehicle then it's like stationary and you know from there this should have been a little bit lower because then less people would have bid on it and i would have probably ended up paying less money for it but other than that this has been kind of a cool learning experience and you know i'm pretty excited it's definitely a project and it's going to be a little bit of a tough one there but just just a lot of work probably and i don't know what do you guys think about the whole fuel system thing what what could be causing uh you know not getting fuel up in there but look at this you guys we're gonna need a whole front end look what i actually got um this is my old quad right here 1996 i need to get this thing fixed up it ran last time i parked it here but look at this you guys i got a sport bumper actually in green too which is pretty cool um so i think we're gonna sports swap this and look at this you guys i got a hood back here also so when picked both of these bad boys off of facebook marketplace got that for 180 bucks which it's got all the brackets behind it and i got this for 80 dollars a decent hood there but it's hilarious yellow put a yellow hood on here my mom's like oh it's like a green bay packers vehicle i put a big g on it <laughs> we are going to be uh well pretty much am going to be sport swapping it i already actually bought a grill for it i have every part for the truck except for the frame behind the grill here so that like kind of frame that goes back in there you guys can see it right there i don't have the sport one and uh the only other thing i noticed actually is look at that uh sway bar end link that definitely looks bent so i probably need to order up one of those but other than that i think i have all the parts for the truck oh the only other thing i am missing is i do want to get uh some new a pillars b pillars i found a set for like 200 bucks with tweeters in them so I do need to order that up, but I'm kind of like, I'll hold off on that for a little bit. I got a new sunglass holder up there. Definitely coming along. Lots to do to the truck. Next video, we'll be doing a lot more fixing up on the truck. Try to get it off the trailer. Try to get it running. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wasn't too eventful, but other than you know, pretty much just kind of going over the truck. But yeah, you guys, so thank you guys for watching. If you guys are excited for the rebuild on the truck and the sport swap and just getting it all running, hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Definitely helps out, especially the like, you guys. Like button, huge help for the channel. Gets the video recommended and it'll definitely help out. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next Cummins Copart build video.